Alrighty guys, thanks for joining me. This is your host, Tiny Jester. Thank you so much for joining me. We're going to be looking at World War II, Barbarossa to Berlin by Ted Racer and produced by GMT Games. I was going to do an intro video, which I actually recorded this morning, but it was like over an hour long just to cover some of the basics of the rules and stuff, and I thought, well... Maybe what I'll do is have like a little intro before we actually start playing, kind of talk about a few things, uh, and instead of uh, having people watch like an hour long video. Uh, the reason you are scoped in over here is because this is where most of the action is going to take place probably in the first turn. You can see the rest of the board here, if I can do this without destroying my camera. Is all set up and ready to go. Now, the German orders and stuff that are located up here, up in the top right-hand corner, facing where the where the um, where the German player would sit over there, or the Axis player actually would sit over there. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the same quadrant down here for ease of use. Um, possibly, I, I don't. I'm just trying to figure out the best the best way to do this and we can turn this down just slightly there we go all right so um bu -bu 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 -bu. i'm not going to go too in depth in the rules i am certainly not a rules expert it's been a long time since i actually played this game this is one of my top favorite games of all time uh it is you know if you're a uh, Paths of Glory, Illusions of Glory, uh, any of that card-driven system, which I love card-driven system games, first of all. It's like one of my favorites. Takes all the minutia of trying to figure out where units can go out of the out of it, makes it a little bit easier. Um, it adds some of the variety or chaos of war because sometimes you won't get the cards you need at a certain time you can't just automatically do what you want to do and uh, so yeah it's definitely adds a lot of variety and spice to the game the card driven games so um, I had to move this to my couch so I'm repositioning some of the units on here so uh, if you've watched our unboxing or kind of setup of World War II Barbarossa de Berlin, then you know that the first decision that needs to be made is whether the Axis player uses the Von Paulus pause card or the Barbarossa card. He starts with one of these two cards automatically in his hands. These cards you can only play on turn one, uh, which is something else I'm going to grab the camera for a second and move it over here so you can see on our turn track here turn one is going to be just the June 1944 turn and every uh, normal turn is six rounds in the first turn you're basically playing just round number six from this Think of this as a full turn, but you're just playing round number six. Then we'll go into normal turn mode where each player will play six times. So in the first um, the first turn of the game, each player is only be going to be playing one activation or one card for that. So, uh, big decision whether the Axis player actually uses the Barbarossa card or the Von Paulus card. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the Barbarossa card. I'm going to choose the Barbarossa card, which we'll look at here in a minute. So, this automatically goes into my hand. You take the uh, Von Paulus card, right? And you take the rest of the Axis deck, and you just shuffle them up. So, you might end up having both of them in your hand anyways, but you are guaranteed to at least have one of these cards that you need to play in your hand to start with. And of course then you just shuffle these cards up. 
and so form really well. And of course, we only have the Blitzkrieg cards. So there's going to be 25 Blitzkrieg cards for each side. So we're just using the 25 Blitzkrieg cards. Right now there's 24 because the one card is here. And you're going to shuffle these up. And then what I'm going to do is roll a dice. The, oops, the German dice. And of course, it goes across the room. Excellent start. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm going to move my drink over here. Bring my microphone up a little bit closer to me here so you guys can actually hear me now. So, uh, shuffling these up. Got a good shuffle. I'm going to cut it once. I'm going to cut it twice. Shuffle twice more. One more cut. I'm going to roll a die, hopefully not across the room this time. Three, and I'm going to... One, two, three. So the next cards will be one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to add those to the card that we... The Barbarossa card. Okay. All right. Well, wow. I've got some pretty good ones here. All right. The Axis player... He's just going to shuffle up his cards again. Just the Blitzkrieg. He's going to have 25 Blitzkrieg cards. So I'm just going to shuffle these up out of the way. All right. And do a cut. Shuffle twice more. Do another cut. All right, now I'll roll a die. Three, one, two, three, and so we're going to draw seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we'll just put these over there. All righty. So, uh, I know you probably can't see everything. But I'm trying to keep you focused in on where most of the action is going to take place. Obviously on the east front of our game. So, uh, the victory turn marker, which is over here, will start on the seven space. Each player will have seven cards. Uh, there is... No orders, no mandated orders rolled in the first time, but there are orders. So for the allied player, they end up having Stalin's orders, which means the German player can move these three stand fast card or tokens out on the board. For the uh, Axis player, they have no orders. Uh, mandated orders so that's not rolled on the first turn every other uh, turn you start with that to find out who's gonna have a mandated offensive so uh, we're gonna take these stand fast orders and we're gonna place them on the board so We're going to do is we're going to place one we're going to place one here all right and then we're going to place one I'm going to place one, hmm, it's a tough decision. Where are we going to place them? Place one there. And I'm going to place one I think we're going to 
Stand fast back there. Keep that army from moving up. We're going to try anyways. All right. So the German player, round number six, turn number one, is going to play Barbarossa. So play on turn, uh, let's see if we can zoom in here. Play on turn one only. Axis places five combat markers in any Axis occupied spaces including multinational spaces. You get a plus one die roll modifier for all German attacks versus Soviet units this round. Cancels the Soviet trench no retreat option and defensive one right effects for the entire turn. So it is a starred event, so this will actually go out of the game. So the German player is going to get to activate for combat five spaces so we're going to activate that space there we're going to activate this space here we're going to activate this space here we're going to activate this space right there And we're going to activate this space right here. I believe those are going to be our five combat areas. A uh, little bit of a glare there. I wonder if turning this other light off might actually help. Let's see. Mm, gets rid of the glare at least. Doesn't make it really bright for you. I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments. If it's better with the light on or the light off, I'm assuming without the glare, it might be a little bit easier to see things. So we shall see. All right. All right. So for the axis action number six, we are doing an event. So I'm going to place that on the event marker there. Uh, and we are getting ready to go here. So, how are we going to handle these combats? So there's going to be a little bit of a difference here in the combats. So when you activate a space for combat, not all units have to attack. And not all units have to attack the same space either. So in this case, um, if we slide this over, you see we have the German 18th Infantry Army the 16th Army, and the 4th Panzer Army. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the 4th the Panzer Army attack Cortland. We're going to have the 18th German Army and the... No, I'm sorry, the 18th and the 16th German Armies attack the Kanas. And they're going to be joined by the 3rd Panzer Army and the 9th Infantry Army. So these two are going there. These two are going to go there. Alright, then what we're going to do here is... This little core is not going to participate in the combat. So I'm just going to slide it aside. But these two armies, the 2nd Panzer and the 4th Army, are going to attack Rest the Tosk. And... Then, let's see here. What we're trying to do is surround this guy. We want to take over this space and this space, put this unit out of supply so that the German or the Russian player has to, or the Allied player needs to decide whether or not they're going to try to rescue this guy or if they're just going to sacrifice this guy when he's out of supply. 
So we're going to try and build a fortification here. You can see if we take over this space, this space, and this space, there's no other way to get across other than here or here into this, this little northern quadrant up here. Uh, and then I think what we're going to do is we're going to try to take out Do we want to, I think we want to, we have these three armies attack this guy here in the trench. No, uh, yeah, these guys are going to come up there, right? These guys... Yeah, these guys are going to try and take out that guy. All right. So that is our combat. Now, we're going to look to see if the Axis player has any combat cards that he can use for this. <clears throat> and actually, the Axis player, or the Allied player, has Enigma. They have Operation Dorch. They have Casablanca, they have British reinforcements, partisans. They have a combat card, but it's paradrops. Can only be used for offensive fire, and that's it. So he doesn't have any combat cards. Oops, I forgot to pick up the other card. Lindley, sorry. All right, so he doesn't have any combat cards that he can add to this. The attacker is looking through his cards and chooses, he chooses not to play any. All right, so we're going to start here in the caucus, or conus, sorry, carnus. Um, but these units and these units, again, the panzer unit's gonna go up here because, uh, I'll show you why here in a second, all right? All right, so let's see. We've got the uh, I think. Okay, so um, we're going to start with this combat. It says five, 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 five. That's twenty firepower versus three firepower. Need to get out my little charts here. Actually, what I'll do is I might just put them on the computer screen so you guys can see. All right. Which means I will have to flip back and forth a little bit, but it'll be okay. It'll be fine. Trust me. Um, I'm going to move this up here, I guess. All right. So... See on the desktop we have our <clears throat> Barbarossa to Berlin uh, combat table. So we're on the 15 plus column here. We got a plus one to our die roll modifier for this attack. And I just need to be remember to switch back to the actual screen. All right. So um, do I have a little glass or cup or something I could roll into that would be super cool let me let me go grab one real quick hang on a second goes back and forth All right, so that should be pretty decent there. So um, 
on Connus. We're on the 15 plus column. There is no special anything's going on. Is that true? Um, is that true is the question. Is that true? I don't think the river, this and see that this river here between these two occasions is dashed. This one is not dashed. So let's look that up actually, because that might be a good point if the river does anything for that. It does give it one left, but because of the card play, I'm just wondering whether or not. Uh -huh. <laughs> do, 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 do. You know what? I will give them the one left on that. So we're on the 12 to 14 golem. There. I think we're going to be on the 12 to 14 golem. So let's see what we get. Might not matter. Let's find out. We got a plus one to our die roll. What do we get there? We got a six. So the most you can get is a six anyways, which is the most we could have gotten anyways. No matter if we were on this golem or not. As you can see, so we ended up getting a six on step losses. The Soviets is a three. So he is going to be on the three column. He doesn't get to go right because of the trends. Okay, so one left for that. I think it was one left for the trench. Oh, he doesn't have a trench. What am I thinking? Defender one right. So that's probably what was canceled on that card. But I don't think it cancels the river effect. So anyways, 12 to 40. He is on the three golem. So let's see what he rolls. Soviets. Oh, and of course it bounces. Right in, right out. Of course. And he rolls a five. So he three. Oh, no. Damn. So that is going to cause a step loss. Unfortunately, it's going to cause a step loss to our unit. So we'll take the step loss off our infantry unit. He had to get that three, didn't he? He had to get that three. Or... All right. Uh, this unit is going to take six step losses. So that is three. And that is six. So it's going to be replaced by a Russian core. And it is going to have to retreat. It is going to have to retreat one two there now the infantry units can advance into that space we're not done with combat yet which they're going to do all three of our infantry units are going to move into that space The mechanized unit can actually advance three spaces.
But I think we want to hold this space because there is a victory point there that the Russians could try to take over if we move on that space. So we're going to actually... You know what we might do is just leave our we'll leave our infantry unit in there. Like that. And we're going to take our... We're going to take our, he's going to go into that space and into that space, I think, what we're going to do. Which means that this space becomes German. And this space becomes German. Ah, come here, you. Come here, you. We're going to try and cut the Russians off here. We're going to try and knock them out of supply. Okay. Um, we will do this combat now. The 4th Panzer... going to do the 4th Panzer versus this core here in Cortland. So the Panzer attack value of 5 on the large combat table. He'll be on the 5. Uh, the woods or forest give no combat effect. So no adjustment there. So a five. A five. Let's see what a five gives us. All right. In and out again. Really? How, how is that even possible? I couldn't do that if I tried. I need to do that. All right. Let's try that again. Oh, we rolled a one. That is the worst possible result. You get a plus one because of our combat, or because of our card we played. So it is going to give us at least three on the five factors. Cortland now is on the two small combat unit table. And you can see it needs to do at least three damage, and it cannot do at least three damage. But we will roll anyways. Kind of a waste of time, but what do you roll? Four? All right. So four would be one, but again, we have three combat losses on our vehicle, or on our uh, army there. So we can't take any losses. So this is going to be eliminated. This is going to be eliminated. And allied eliminated units and sure where it goes, but I think it goes there. I'll have to look at that. All right, since it was eliminated, we can advance three spaces. So it is going to go one. It does not need to go there. It only has to go, it can go three spaces. It's going to go one, two, three. Do we want to go there? Where do we want to go? Hmm. Do we want to come up and help third Panzer? Alright, so 
So this space is now German controlled. Alrighty, and so that is those two combats done. We can take these markers out of there. All right, now we're going to do this combat down here. It is 10 on this little unit. Poor little guy. He's not going to make it. Again, we're not going to use the core, so it will not get to advance. It will not get to take damage or anything like that. So it's 10. And a shift left because of the... A shift left because of the river. It's tacking across the river there. So instead of 9 to 11, we're going to be on the 6 to 8 column. All right, let's see what we get. Really? <laughs> Another one. We got a plus one, which is still three. It's going to kill the core. The core attack fire firepower of two again is not going to be able to do anything back to us because the most it can do is two so we are going to eliminate that core as well in brusque litosk and the infantry unit can only advance into that space but the panzer unit the Panzer can go three spaces. It's going to go one, two, three. And take over that location. So this, this guy now, this poor guy, I believe he is out of supply. So I'm going to grab a couple markers and see if we can mark him as such. He is out of supply. Because uh, he can't go there, can't go there, there. He's, I mean, he's completely surrounded by Germans. Actually, there's no one there. Uh, no, the core is still there. Sorry. That's right. The core is still there. All right. Last thing we want to take care of this unit right here. We're going to use those two combat spaces I'll move those counters on the way and we're going to participate with everyone so we have the 17th army the 6th army and the 1st panzer core 15 firepower uh, we don't have to worry about the shift right we do have to worry about Attacker two left. So instead of 15, we're going to be on the 911 column because of his trench. He actually has a trench there. The card does not remove the trench or anything like that. It just um, cancels the Soviet trench no retreat option. So if we win this combat, he will have to retreat he can't not choose to not retreat so um oh actually you know what i want to do hang on a second i don't want to i want to huh. i want to keep this panther right there is where i want to do sorry not move him to minsk my bad all right um so 15, 2 to the left, 9 to 11. Uh, and here we go. Hey, oh my gosh, what's wrong with this dice? We do get a plus one because of the, uh, the Barbarossa. So it's going to take us to four damage. It is on the five column. It does not get to go... One right because of the trench, though. It does not get... So the card does cancel that one to the right. So it'll be on the five column. 
What's wrong with this German dice? It rolls ones. All right, let's see what happens here. Three is a, th oh no, another three. So we did four and he did three. So we ended up losing the battle. Unfortunately, we're gonna take a step loss and he's gonna take a step loss and he has to retreat. And because we beat him only by one because we rolled crappy, he only has to retreat one space. So he's going to retreat right there. Uh, infantry unit can move in to that hex. And this one can move into that hex. But I th think it wants to... S Does it want to stay in this hex? Uh, hmm... Yeah, it will, uh, infantry will stay there and the mechanized unit will actually move there. Trying to cut off uh, any kind of rescue op opportunity there. And I believe that was not great combat for the Russian player on his turn. <sighs> He ended up removing a couple of cores from the Russians. He ended up taking a couple hits, though. Army here took a hit. Our army here took a hit. And I believe that is it for the German player for turn number one, activation number one. Now, we can look at the allied players. Alright, I think what the Russian player is going to do is he's going to play Lend Lease. He's going to play it for the five ops, though. I think he's going to play it for the five operation points. Uh, there's some special rules on turn number one, June 1941. And there's a lot of things you can't do, like bring in reinforcements and all that. So we're going to get five operation points. But this card is not going away because we're not playing it for the actual event. We're just playing it for the operations. So this card will stay in play for the allied player. All right, so he's going to get five maneuvers. So the question for the Russian player, and this will probably go with any game, no matter what happens, is some of your units are probably going to be knocked out of supply. More than likely this, this hex, possibly this hex, if the Germans can come in, bust in through the bottom, possibly. Um, and you have to decide, is it worth spending all your operations to try and punch a hole in where the Germans are the weakest to get to them. At this point, I think the Russian players, you know, you could attack here, but you're attacking, you're attacking an area that has 10 firepower, which is a lot.
and you would only have three, four, five firepower. So uh, not a lot of great options. To be honest, not a lot of great options. Slide this back just slightly so you can see a little bit more of Soviets. Predictamenta. So the, uh, so you would take your little action marker here. In this case, it's the Allied action number six. And you'd place that on the Events, uh, or I'm sorry, Ops card, sorry, Ops card, you're going to place it on the Ops card. So we're going to have to do five things. The question is, he could technically attack this guy, try to weaken that army while it's reduced. He doesn't want to take any losses because that'll just give the Germans more ammunition to come in this way. All right, so I think the Russians are going to activate that kind of move. And activate the army to move. They're going to activate this guy to move. Hmm. Uh, so the question is, do they bring this army down to help stem the tide? Bring it out of Leningrad? Swamps give the attacker one to the left. He only has, what, one uh, panzer there. And these guys that are out of supply. Not sure there's a lot we can do to get them. There's no there's no uh, attack options other than coming down there. Or coming across there. And if you do that and the attack does not go well, that could be a problem. There is, of course, other areas to worry about. The Allied player could do something down here in North Africa. They do have uh, um, Oops, that guy should have been in that space right there. They do have this German Panzer here. I could, uh, it is in the mountains though. Mountains give attacker one to the left. Hmm. Oh, so many good decisions. So many, so many good decisions. Again, we got another core here that we should probably move. So that's one, two, three, four. We need one more. Let me move that guy. Oops. Not on the combat side, on the move side. I can do your moves in any order. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do this one. He is going to go to 
the question is, does he want to come here and maybe do something about these yahoos? Or does he just retreat back? Or does he help these guys out? One, two, I guess it'll go like that. Could go three and go up there. This is probably, yeah, you know what? Hmm. This is probably going to be the next, well, not necessarily. You don't want to get a bunch of units trapped either, so. One, two. He's going to move there. Try to help out. This guy is going to move. Oops. Just wanted the move marker, dude. He's going to come down here. Uh, is he? This guy's on a stand fast order. Hmm. See, that's where that stand fast, because we like to move him over there. Alright, he was going to move one, two. This guy is going to move here. And this guy is going to move one, two, three. Move him up there. So that, oh, we still have this guy here to move. I think he'll move to one, two, three. Could move down here. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I think he'll move there. So I think that's the Russians. Hey, Bleacher Bum Gaming, what's going on? What's up, my friend? Is this solo? Yeah, I'm playing solo. It's not normally a solo type game, but I am playing it solitaire. Uh, we just had Operation Barbarossa here, if you're just joining us. As the Germans blitzkrieg right through the middle here, and a couple Ger Russian units are now out of supply. And that's going to be kind of bad. Kind of bad. Kind of bad. So I am playing solo. All right. Did you ever get your uh, Hunters game? I know you're looking at getting it. All right. So now we have to check the end of the turn matrix thing. If I can find the end of the turn thing. Uh huh. Let's see here. I need to find the. Um, <laughs> There's a couple good aids I should print out from uh, Board Game Geek for this game. That might actually help. Out of supply units. Oh, you're going to get it after your football season. Okay. Massive map. Oh, you haven't seen the whole thing yet. I have to zoom back out and show you the whole world here. There's the whole world. We just haven't had to deal anything outside of Russia yet. We're only in the first turn, so you know that's how things go. Um, supply, 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 supply. Attrition. 
Small combat unit which are out of supply during the side's attrition segment are placed in the eliminated unit box. Non-Soviets, no, Soviets, uh, large combat units are placed in the eliminated unit box along with a matching single man u or small counter unit from the reserve box. Okay, so what we got to do is uh, during the attrition phase here, this guy's out of supply. Uh, so we can take that marker off. This guy is going to go into the Allied Eliminated Units box down here. And we have a couple of the cores already. And then you take one of your single man counter, or single man counter, your small counters out of the reserve box and put it in the eliminated as well. And what is this? Was this eliminated too? Good lord. Yes, it was. Okay. Uh, so that was in the eliminated box. All right. So uh, the trenches. Now I need to find out what happens to the stupid trenches because the Germans have taken over one and then there's one that is empty. Let's see what happens to those trenches. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, this is the first turn of Operation Barbarossa, so it should go pretty, pretty good for the Germans. It should go pretty good for the Germans. If they didn't roll a bunch of ones, it would have been better, but all of their, I think like three out of four combats, they rolled a one, which was the worst result. All right, so let's find trenches now. Jeez. All right. Uh, if a Soviet space contains a... Um, British and Soviet trenches are removed from the map either when the space becomes Axis controlled or as the Allied player chooses during the end of the turn phase. The British trench at Tobruk is removed once the Axis control the space or when the Allies control Benghazi. They may not be rebuilt. Alright, so... Uh, because the Germans now owned this space, this trench is eliminated. And I should put that this is now German controlled. Alrighty. This one is not actually yet German control. Well, it's, it's out of supply. So I'm going to just take it out and because I mean sooner or later somebody's going to go through there and it just clutters up the map with that there. So I'll just take it out. I'm not sure if it's supposed to. It's completely surrounded by Germans. I guess technically the, the trench, all right, I guess the trench can stay. We'll put the trench in there. I guess the trench technically stays because it's not German controlled yet, even though it's out of supplied. All right, I think that's about it for our first turn, our first activities. It was only one card a piece, and that was that was it. So now, what you can do is because we're drawing up our hand for the next turn. You can discard any cards you want. So what you want to do is you want to keep all those high ops cards, fives and fours. And the German will then turn in those other three cards. And so he has three cards in his hand. And he'll draw four, five, six, 
seven. Oh, he ended up worse than what he got rid of. Good Lord. Ugh, terrible, terrible, terrible. All right, the online player. Uh, this one's out of the game. I'll have to try and remember that. Uh, he's got a five, a four, and a four. I guess normally you want to keep the fives and the fours. And then see if there's anything we want to play. May play if Allies controlled Iran and Algiers or Syracuse. No assets control spaces in Libya or Egypt. Neutral. Partisans. They want to keep partisans because that's a good one to play. And they'll get rid of these other two. And they have four cards. Five. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, look at that. look at the three cards they drew. Five, five, four. Holy crap! All right, so that is going to be the draw phase. We would do the mandatory offensives, but we're going to do that next episode. No sense in uh, trying to get it all done in one episode. And we're off to a flying start. Uh, after turn number one, we will now go to, uh, let's see if I can turn this around here. We're going to the summer of 41. You can see the Axis units may not SR into the Soviet Union, and the Soviet Union can't entrench. We are actually going to go to summer of 41. Turn coming up next time. There you go. So that is it after turn number one. Let me know what you think, guys. Be sure to leave your thoughts, comments, suggestions down below. And uh, we'll see you all very, very soon. Thanks to Bleacher Bum Gaming for coming on out, checking out our little live stream here. I appreciate that. Be sure to check out Bleacher Bums Gaming for all of your awesome sports um, replay needs. And, of course, if you are a boxing fan, he's got one of the best boxing games out there glory days boxing and uh, be sure to check that out as he is the designer creator and developer of glory days boxing all righty guys well anyways thanks for stopping in we will see you all next time till then take care have fun and we'll see you on the other side